I have two words for you. How is this possible? Now, more than ever, you can hop onto your Instagram feed and see people doing stuff like this. Jumping 40 inches into the air, dunking on people with their head at the rim, or even literally flying. How are these people jumping so high? What do they have that you don't? Well, lucky for you, I'm going to explain exactly how these people are able to jump so high. Firstly, we gotta talk about the importance of the Achilles tendon. During the motion of bending down for a jump, your calves store potential energy. And while ascending into the air, that potential energy gets transformed into you usable kinetic energy through the Achilles tendon. And in order to jump higher, you would need to strengthen your Achilles tendon to be able to release as much energy as possible. People with strong Achilles tendons would most likely do stuff like 100 single leg pogo jumps, hill sprints focusing on really pushing off with your toes while going up the hill, single leg calf raises, and lastly, single leg bounds again focusing on pushing off with your toes for that extra Achilles activation. Another thing that these super athletes tend to do is transform their slow twitch muscle fibers into fast twitch muscle fibers. For those of you that don't know, no fast and slow twitch muscle fibers are basically the atoms that your muscles are made of. The more fast twitch muscle fibers you have, the more explosive your muscles will be. This is because fast twitch muscle fibers create and release force incredibly fast. However, this doesn't mean slow twitch muscle fibers are completely useless. Slow fibers are still needed because they save more energy due to their lesser use of power. People who can jump amazingly high usually have an 80-20 split of predominantly fast twitch muscle fibers, and they achieve this by training in ways that are extremely explosive and extremely unorthodox. The way you are currently training is probably not helping you at all. Many people try to increase their vertical jump with weight training and plyometrics, which is good and all, but you also want to train jumping by simply just jumping and adding a bit of restriction to the movement. Don't get me wrong, the people that are jumping over 40 inches are most definitely doing weight training and basic plyometrics, but they are also jumping with restrictions. Just jumping and trying to reach somewhere slightly out of your reach is one of the best ways to increase your vertical jump, but you could also do something like seated jumps or seated to tap jumps, where you touch your toes mid-air after the jump. These types of workouts remove your ability to generate power on the way down while jumping, forcing your body to become more explosive and powerful on the way up while jumping. Another thing these super athletes do would be sprint training. Sprinting is a great way to increase your vertical jump because it activates all your muscle fibers and due to the fact that sprinting is an explosive movement, it forces your slow twitch muscle fibers to turn into fast muscle fibers over time. All of these workouts I have named can be performed with added weight but only start doing that once these workouts have become considerably easy for you. The next thing you need to get down is your jumping form. And for you to understand what good jumping form is, let me show Jay Morant's jumping form. And mind you, the penultimate step is the two steps you take before ascending off the floor for a jump. John Morant pushes into his penultimate while driving his arms all the way above his ears, keeping his hips at a stable line, and then jumping straight through that penultimate into a crazy dunk. These mechanics are perfect.